Happy Friday, everyone, and Happy New Year. And as we start the new year, I am going to try to try to at least, I don't know if it's a Friday thing or not, but I'm going to try to hop on and just answer questions that came in through the week. This has been a very light week, and I hope you've had a light, relaxing week as well. But yeah, starting off, it uh, looks like our simulator video is still probably the hottest thing out there. And, you know, it's still both sides, and I hate that part. Uh, for example, Gemini, and this is not Gemini the AI, this is Gemini um, the person who commented, great video and spot on. There is no substitute for real world, real world problems that you find in everyday machines. As a maintenance tech that tries to keep older machines running, fixing both in mechanical and electrical issues, I find that buying spare PLC sensors, et cetera, before can alleviate a lot of your frustration. And you know, that's kind of the point of it is, you know, we've got to, and, you know, if you're going to a school, they, and they, they, you know, a lot of people have tried to take that video and put it into their particular scenario, but I wasn't, I was talking about schools. You cannot tell me that a four-year university should be able to put a student out in engineering and them never have seen a piece of hardware. I, I just can't, I can't accept that. Now, what a lot of people, well, okay, let's go ahead and let's just get the, um, you know, address the elephant in the room. A lot of people said, well, sounds like you were doing this just to sell your trainers. Well, maybe. But let's spin that around for a second. Because, yeah, I, I hope if you buy a trainer, I hope you find our trainers are very beneficial. I mean, that they're the trainers I use when I want to learn, so I think they're pretty good. But I would much rather, if I could sell a simulation because one, once I develop it, I can just sell, 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 and we're just moving electrons around. Also, I can sell to anywhere in the world right now. You know, we only ship our trainers in the U.S., so that open, would open me up to a global supply. So don't think that I have not wasted a ton of effort trying to make a simulator work. I have not seen a simulator that is really beneficial for people to gain experience with hardware in the field. Several of you did ask, uh, you know, for me to develop uh, some type of data logging, meter data logging um, videos, probably probably along the Fluke, because I do have the Fluke Connect. And I, actually, I found out I do have one meter that does some data logging. So uh, um, probably will build that part out because that is something that definitely in that whole video or post of me showing my uh meter box a lot of you're like yeah you got nothing to really do any data logging in there jason watts says nice drive if i might say so and yeah that he was talking about uh siemens g120 drive uh, that we're doing a series on for our siemens train you're going to see some more siemens videos coming out this year then Sometimes I struggle with the usernames. Passive aggressive negotiato. I think it is. I really like the comment anyway. Customer just tells you what they want. This is about wire colors, our wire color video. <clears throat> Customer just tells you what they want and that's it. I hate that solid blue gets flipped back and forth between minus or between zero volt DC and plus 24 volt DC. I don't care if we settle on blue and brown or what, but I wish we would standardize on something. And the, the, that is the tough part is our industries have grown really, you know, early on grew in pockets. There are no standards that I know already. Some of you are like, oh yeah, we have, you know, this UL standard, we have this. No, in that video, we talk about it. Really the only standard that UL 508A has is grounds must be green and actually there are several exceptions even for that one hey you know what i had a trolley car video uh and it, several of y'all asked about it i didn't give a whole lot of context on this you know I, I grew up in a machine shop so i just always love you know seeing pictures of machine shops so it, was, it wasn't a super high tech or anything one but this is the trolley car or the cable car i'm sorry i called it a trolley car it is not it is a cable car powerhouse in san francisco and so that was a really cool little trip we took and so yeah this is an actual this is actually the operating shop there of course there's always one in every group somebody sat there and pointed out where is it 
right there. They're like, that HVAC should be inside. Well, maybe, or maybe there's a reason, like it's a historic powerhouse and they are trying to keep it looking like it did, but they still needed a little bit of cooling in the building. And so that was the only place to put it. I did get a vote of confidence from Huntington Built on the idea of restarting our podcast. And I, I actually, I, I figured out, because um, actually YouTube's the one that keeps telling me that I need to do a podcast. I'm like, well, we did that kind of. So it is kind of on here. I don't even know how it shows up or how any of that works. I got to figure all those things out. But yeah, I may do one maybe this weekend. Not even sure what on yet. If you got any ideas, drop them down in the comments. Um. Did YouTube AI you too? Now, this is a five-year-old video about how encoders work. Sometimes I'm like, where do these comments come from? Are they AI? But mainly, I think AI could do a heck of a lot better job AIing me than I looked in a five-year-old video. They probably could do a better job than I do today, or I know they could do a better job than um, I do today. Let's see, uh, had some come up about our messaging instructions, and I guess maybe I need to do one. I'm kind of clearing up a little bit. You know, uh, we we talk about everything being latest and greatest, but uh, the, uh, apparently it's a really stellar video. Right? Well, I think it's a stellar video, but it's a popular video is how to um, do messaging from the MicroLogics. PLC to the Compact and Control Logics PLC. And there were some really good discussions in there, some roadblocks that I hadn't even thought about. And then I think I need to probably do a video kind of showing up data files because several people asked, okay, do I have to use N7 or could I use N10? And, you know, so I probably need to, you know, talk about that as that that's the same as, you know, having a tag called dog versus cat. As long as you point it to the right place, the PLC is not going to care. Then Randy Parker actually brought, you know, and here's where, uh, you know, I learned a lot in y'all's comments. Uh, he put in his two cent on messaging string data types. Now we're still on the whole reading and writing to a MicroLogix PLC, but in a control logic compact logic controller, you can read and write from an SLC string data type, but it must be done with a PLC5 typed read and write message. I didn't know that. And then, yeah, um, yeah, I'll have to play with that. I appreciate you bringing that up, Randy. And this one's actually on my very first PLC program. I did a review of it. I wish it showed me the years. I guess I can right click and open this. Nope, it won't even let me. Come on, pop up. There we go. Oh, now you're going to hear noise. Oh, get that paused. Yeah, four years ago, I did a video where I, re I reviewed my first program. And kind of going back to that whole hands-on discussion, uh, this says, Hi, Tim, would it be possible to make a brief walkthrough of the machine line? Really curious to see it cycling in action. By the way, this is one of the most useful RS Logic videos I've seen. Lots of learning. Well, I'm glad to hear that. And here's where, yeah, I haven't seen that particular machine in decades. I would wildly assume it is still in operation. But, uh, yeah, you know, yeah, I don't know. Um, I haven't, yeah, I can't do that one. But we, it would be kind of cool. You know, I know we have, like, how it works and dirty jobs. But it would be cool to have it really from the control perspective. You know, so many plants, you know, act like they're, you know, got some top secret stuff going on. I'll never forget, I was working for a manufacturer that debunked, pretty much, we'll call it, was in the lumber industry. And I had like 20 pages I had to sign before we could get remote access. And finally, the end, he's like, I don't know why we make you do all this. All we do is chop wood up and glue it back together. But yeah, so many plants think they're doing something super top secret. But it would be cool if we could really get some practical applications to kind of talk through in that way. I am 38 years old. Is it too late to transition from electrical engineering or to electrical engineering? Absolutely not. As long as you have a willingness to learn, it's never too late to transition. And uh, that's, that, that oh, arguably, I'll say you're probably in the prime age. It didn't actually say what you do for a living, so it kind of can depend you know, probably big ones that we do a lot of transition with, we do um, transition a lot of people that are in software engineering 
into automation. Probably the big thing there is going back to that whole hardware piece. You know, they, they understand the logic, but they don't quite understand how the wires, you know, how to relate the wires to what their, what their knowledge is. Um, you know, if you're coming from maintenance, so, or if you're coming even from production line, it, it, yeah, it's at 38, you're young. That's all I would say about that. Go for it. And yeah, any questions that you have, go ahead and post them in along the way. Hey, Tim, just wondering, are you an electrician or electrical engineer? I'm neither. I'm an industrial sorcerer. <laughs> and, you know, I like, like most people in our industry, I do have a long convoluted way that I got here. I, um, why, did, why didn't I get a camera stand? Didn't I learn this last week? I, my arm got tired. Um, but I, um, I grew up in a machine shop. I was working there. Actually, I was working there when I was about 12 years old and, um, really, I, I went to school to be a mechanical engineer and, you know, I didn't quite probably have as much mechanical. Now, I don't know if it said I didn't have as much mechanical knack as much as when I saw that you could take electrons and make those mechanical pieces move. That was just exciting to me. And so I kind of moved over into the electrical realm, but I did not finish my electrical engineering. I'm a three and a half years, I have three and a half years into it and decided I was smart enough on my own. Biggest mistake I made, I should have stuck it out for that little bit. But yeah, um, then I uh, kind of uh, went on and uh, worked through maintenance and some various other things. And we started TW Controls about 20 years ago. I am a master electrician who's never actually used his license. I, um, I, well, I shouldn't say that. I mean, just mainly, if you want conduit or anything, don't call me. I get an electrician to do all that stuff. <laughs> um, you know, the wire pulling and all that. But, uh, but yeah, I, I do have a master electrician license. I got it later on mainly because we were um, doing a project and we needed someone to be a master electrician and I had the experience. So I went and took the test and probably should do a, actually, I probably should do a series on that. It was a very difficult test, but it was very enlightening too. And kind of along that, if you are a master electrician or if you do have any certification, because, you know, I, I think sometimes it can come, I do kind of come across because I think we're a little over certified. But are there certain ones, especially the ones that are coming into licensing, that once you have them, don't let them go? Because, I mean, I, I, I always joke I'm a master electrician who's never used his license. And pretty much that is true. But better believe uh, that was a tough test. I'm just going to keep renewing that thing and keep doing my CEUs for it. And who knows, one day I may hang this up and become a grumpy old electrician and just change outlets out in, in residential houses or something. Yeah, the alias video, that was another one that's still pretty um, hot and cold. Um, here we go. Uh, as someone who programs and troubleshoots, input and output routines are much better than alias and if you know what you're doing. I hate when y'all don't don't say if you know what you're doing. Can't explain to us why. I mean, I agree with you, but let's let's not make it out that someone who uses aliases doesn't know what they are doing. Oh, I posted a picture of 35 power flexes, and you know, there's always somebody with a great comment on that. So Quiet Vega says that's like 25 PlayStations worth of PowerFlex 525s. They stack so nicely outside of the panel. I wish they could stack that neat inside panel someday, and you're right. Well, it is kind of cool they can do the zero stacking left to right, but yeah, you got to give them things some room to breathe up and down. Although I've had some that, like we did, our unfamiliar machine, especially after we added the compact guard logics and everything to it, it was, there was no way for heat to escape from it while we were developing the new rug rig. And um, we never had issues with it kicking out on every heat. Now we weren't running it that hard either though. Now I did put out a post about, um, I really struggled um, yesterday evening and this morning with what I was really feeling was noise. In fact, let me spin the camera around. And I posted this picture and you don't realize it, but the red and the blue are the exact same value. And so I'm looking at this, I'm like, why is there so much squiggly on that? So I asked in it, what do you make of this? And here's where sometimes I throw something out just to see who gets the cool comment. And yes, this week it is Mike Clark. And he said, not a pterodactyl, not a brooch, maybe a hat. And now we find out who um, 
who actually is into the airplane culture because also, Jerry, you're right there with Mike. You actually got it with a picture of it. Oops, a little grainy, but yeah, this is from the movie Airplane. I'm going to say those are the highlights for this week. Mainly, uh, I've been here long enough, and um, yeah, I'm ready to go home. Y'all have a great weekend. See you next week.